Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The government has been forced to pay £33 million to Eurotunnel to settle a legal dispute over Brexit contingency plans in the event of no deal. The Department for Transport had given ferry contracts to three companies, including one with no ships and no port. But Eurotunnel said the process had been secretive and flawed. Labour blames Chris Grayling, the Transport Secretary, who oversaw the contract process and says he should resign. Our business correspondent, Joe Miller, is at the Eurotunnel terminal in Folkestone for us this evening. Joe? The Department for Transport has already had to walk away from one of its three no-deal Brexit ferry contracts. But the government has now had to spend tens of millions of pounds to avoid a trial which would likely have uncovered how it went about awarding those lucrative deals in the first place. The beneficiary is the company behind me, Eurotunnel, which has now secured public funding to upgrade its facilities. Remember this? The Brexit contract for Seabourne Freight, a company with no ferries, based at a port that isn't ready. And in order to make sure these ferries are still sailing after a no-deal Brexit, the taxpayer is now facing a £33 million bill. Rivals Eurotunnel said they were unfairly treated and sued the Department for Transport over what it called a secretive approach to awarding shipping contracts. The company, which has run ferries in the past, said it should have been considered as part of no-deal plans. Labour says it's a disaster and called on the Transport Secretary to resign. The country cannot afford Chris Grayling. He's got to go for the credibility of our nation. And my goodness me, the people who are working for him must be pulling their hair out. He stumbles from catastrophe to disaster. And it's just gross incompetence on an industrial scale. Uh, enough is enough and this man has got to be out of his post by Monday. Chris Grayling was nowhere to be seen, at his house, or his office, or his department today. But the government says its £33 million deal with Eurotunnel was necessary to ensure vital medicines get through after Brexit. The contracts and the, and the ferries that are going to be available are critical for our contingency plans so it's a, uh, a good thing that the, that the agreement's been made today. Sources close to the case say the government felt over a barrel by the channel operator Eurotunnel and had it not settled, it could face seeing vital freight contracts being cancelled and have to publicly justify why it only started no deal planning late last year. Today, Eurotunnel agreed it would spend some of the money on improving its terminal facilities here in Folkestone. Today, Eurotunnel agreed it would spend some of the money on improving its terminal facilities here in Folkestone. But the scrutiny of Mr Grayling isn't over. His department will face an independent review and may yet be brought back to face the courts. Joe Miller, BBC News, Folkestone. Well, our deputy political editor, John Pienaar, is at Westminster. John, the Eurotunnel payout, this is another apparent misstep for a beleaguered Mr Grayling. And so it is. Clive, to call Chris Grayling accident-prone would be to bend the laws of probability. No one is that unlucky. There have to be other explanations, and there are. Take this Eurotunnel story. The government was late getting going with its no-deal Brexit planning. Chris Grayling was trying to get ahead, and critics say he stumbled. Also today, the Westminster Financial Watchdog, the National Audit Office, is blaming Chris Grayling for failings in his part privatisation of the probation service, an extra £500 million in costs to the taxpayer, rates of reported reoffending way up. All ministers run into trouble. Chris Grayling has a record of mis and misadventures and, and mistakes. There was the, the prison book ban that was overturned by the courts. There was the, the chaos with the rail timetables. Chris Grayling was heavily uh, criticised for that. Now today, Downing Street is telling us Theresa May has full confidence in her transport secretary. Though, of course, with, with Brexit at such a critical stage, Theresa May would hate to lose a loyal colleague and had her enemies a scalp and make her an embarrassing story worse to prolong it, not close it down. But does that mean Chris Grayling is safe in his job? Well, there was a surprise here when Theresa May's last reshuffle. If Theresa May 
gets her Brexit deal through. If she goes on to have another cabinet reshuffle, and those are big ifs, there'll be more surprise here and a lot of criticism from critics if Chris Grading is still standing at the end of that. OK, John, thank you. John Pienaar there at Westminster. Transport Secretary Chris Grayling woke to news that the spending watchdog had criticised his botched privatisation of parts of the probation service at a cost of nearly half a billion pounds. By midday, it got worse. It emerged Eurotunnel was to be paid £33 million over the mess that he'd made of a post-Brexit ferry service that they'd been excluded from. This evening, he is in office, but he is nowhere to be seen. From his Surrey constituency, here's our political correspondent, Libby Vina, on Grayling's failings. Chris Grayling was due to hold his weekly surgery at this library in his constituency today. But like some of the trains he's responsible for and some of the ferries, he didn't turn up. The Transport Secretary, though, faces big questions tonight about incurring another huge bill for the taxpayer this time over a multi-million pound payout, an out-of-court settlement to Eurotunnel over a botched ferry contract in preparation for a no-deal Brexit. The Health Secretary was asked whether it was time for Mr Grayling to go. Uh, no, this is a really important agreement that uh, we've come to as a government as a whole. Uh, it's very important that whatever the Brexit scenario, we can have that unhindered supply of medicines. The Eurotunnel payout cost £33 million, while a bungled privatisation scheme for the probation service, when Mr Grayling was Justice Secretary, cost £467 million. Cancelling the East Coast Rail franchise also meant £2 billion in lost revenue. The country cannot afford Chris Grayling. He's got to go for the credibility of our nation. And my goodness me, the people who are working for him must be pulling their hair out. He stumbles from catastrophe to disaster, and it's just gross incompetence on an industrial scale. In his Surrey constituency, there was little sympathy for the Transport Secretary, though few thought he should actually quit. There's worse than him, a hell of a lot worse than him. In fact, there's a whole list that should resign before him. Now's not the time. They've got enough on their plate to deal with. Deal with all the Brexit rubbish and all this stuff then sort him out. He's had to pay them 33 million. Is that a good use of public money? No, no that's ne it's never a good use of money, public money. No, to pay a private company for a government blunder, no. Whatever the views here, there's no sign yet that Chris Grayling is destined for a quiet life on the back benches anytime soon. The Brexit crisis causing the cabinet to close ranks. The sums involved in the payouts agreed by Chris Grayling are eye-wateringly large. In normal times, he might well be considering his future as a cabinet minister, but these are hardly normal times. And today, the prime minister's spokeswoman said she still had full confidence in her transport secretary. Libby, thank you. In normal times, being responsible for one multi-million pound mishap might be enough to end a ministerial career. But these are not normal times, and the fact that Chris Grayling managed to amass two hugely costly disasters in one day simply resulted in the customary backing of Downing Street. Our political correspondent, Michael Crick, reports. £33 million. Pounds, what it took ministers to settle a legal claim from the Channel Tunnel operator Eurotunnel. A claim that Chris Grayling and the Transport Department failed to include Eurotunnel in the process for awarding cross-channel freight contracts in the event of no deal. The latest episode in what's already become a fiasco with the pulling out three weeks ago of one firm who were included and did get a contract, Seaborn Freight, the ferry firm which owned no ships. The country cannot afford Chris Grayling. He's got to go for the credibility of our nation. And my goodness me, the people who are working for him must be pulling their hair out. He stumbles from catastrophe to disaster. And it's just gross incompetence on an industrial scale. Chris Grayling, as after the Seaborn freight pullout three weeks ago, has been lying low, working all day inside the transport department, refusing requests for interviews and perhaps hoping the story will simply fizzle out. It was left to his colleague, the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, to explain things. And to hear Mr Hancock speak 
You might think this wasn't an embarrassing climb down, but an extraordinary breakthrough, a triumph for government negotiations. This is a really important agreement that uh, we've come to as a government as a whole. Uh, it's very important that whatever the Brexit scenario, we can have that unhindered supply of medicines. And I can't emphasise enough how important the agreement that we've reached today is, because it allows us to have confidence that we'll have that unhindered supply of medicines, which everybody wants to see. The risk was, the government say, that the judge in the Eurotunnel claim might next week have declared all the no-deal freight contracts invalid, endangering medicines so much ministers would have had to drop any thoughts of no deal. That in turn would weaken Britain's negotiating hand. And yet MPs look set to block no deal anyway, 12 days from now, which makes the 33 million look very expensive. So, one more for the growing list of Chris Grayling's ministerial failings. These include, at justice, his ban on prisoners receiving books, later overturned in court. His new court fees, said to have made innocent people plead guilty, later scrapped by Michael Gove. The £200 million Carillion deal for jails, which collapsed and was completely unsustainable, a prisons minister later said. Then at transport, last spring's chaos over the new rail timetable. He'd not asked enough tough questions, Grayling confessed. And of course, seaborne freight. Chris Grayling seems to be overseeing projects that not only don't deliver, but also cost taxpayers dear. And I think he needs to look in the mirror and ask some long, hard questions about how he treats taxpayers' money. It's not other people's money, it's taxpayers' hard-earned money, and it's not being spent on things that it should be being spent on. Despite today's barrage of criticism and more, no doubt, in the Commons next week, Downing Street say Theresa May still has confidence in Chris Grayling and that he has a very important job to do. Well, arguably, uh, Eurotunnel isn't the biggest problem that Chris Grayling has had to face today. And that bigger than that, perhaps, is this report from the National Audit Office on the part privatisation of the probation service that was carried out under Chris Grayling's watch at the Ministry of Justice six or seven years ago. It's a pretty scathing document which says that the implementation of the reforms was rushed, introduced significant risks and was poor value for money and ended up costing almost £500 million uh, more than was originally uh, envisaged. Uh, and it says that uh, uh, more offenders actually ended up uh, going back to jail and, of course, uh, private contracts uh, had to be cancelled. So why hasn't Theresa May got rid of him? Well, I suspect that in normal times, if we didn't have Brexit, and perhaps under another Prime Minister, he would have been reshuffled out of the Cabinet uh, quite a while ago. But you've got to remember uh, that he and Theresa May are close allies dating back to Wimbledon Conservative politics in the 80s. He ran her leadership campaign. He's a strong Brexiter in the Cabinet, but loyal. He doesn't attack his colleagues publicly, doesn't cause her embarrassment, doesn't cause the government embarrassment, at least not on Brexit. It. And she's got to be aware of the delicate balance in the Cabinet between the forces. And of course, if Chris Grayling was to lead the Cabinet, the risk would be he would be another Brexit rebel uh, in crucial Commons votes. Thanks, Michael. Well, just before we came on air, I spoke via the internet with Hugh Merriman MP, a Conservative member of the Transport Select Committee. I began by asking if he shared the concern of others looking on. I do, actually. Uh, I think it's absolutely outrageous that a company has managed to get £33 million out of a £108 million tender contract, so effectively make almost 33% you know, profit, uh, by doing absolutely nothing apart from taking legal action. So I think their behaviour has been unethical, and I don't think it looks very good for those that have let them get away with this either. Well, is it Eurotunnel who've disgraced themselves or the government? Well, I think Eurotunnel have, because... It's not as if they even run shipping operations now. They did in 2015. They've seen a legal loophole and decided to test it. And they've done this off the back of the challenging Brexit problem that we have. So they've basically caused UK taxpayers to pay out money that they probably, you know, may but not they, be... they were in the for. right. That's the point. I mean, the reason this deal has had to be done is because they are legally in the right. I mean, surely this lands at the feet of Chris Grayling. It certainly lands at the feet of the Department for Transport across government. But it's Chris uh, but Grayling who runs the right. department, isn't it? I mean, it's a bit much to blame 
civil servants here. I mean, surely you've got to blame the man at the top. I'm blaming the, I'm blaming the department. I mean, ultimately, it's the government that I, I'm an MP of. Just doesn't look as if it's done its homework, and it looks as if it's paid an awful lot of money out. Um, you know, for a tender failure, it doesn't it doesn't at all um, reflect us in a good light. I know that there's also certain monies given to it to make it resilient for Brexit, but they're a private organisation. They should pay for that themselves. Shouldn't, so, yeah, shouldn't ministers right. take responsibility? You know, there is such a thing as ministerial responsibility and honour in politics still, and people have to take responsibility. Well, those people who have been responsible for this need to come on and explain exactly what happened, how they were responsible. It's not for me to turn around and start saying X, Y, Z should be fired or sacked or fall on their sword. Well, we're talking about Chris uh, Grayling, not X, Y, Z. Well, that's for those... That's, look, Chris will have to explain exactly what's happened and what he's going to do to remedy it and what he thinks... Uh, of, of his position as a result of that. I don't think this is at all a good action and no one comes out of this at all well uh, and people need to reflect on it. I mean, I, I can certainly tell from the tone of your voice, but I mean, you know, the point is out, out there people are saying everything Chris Grayling touches turns to... whatever Something. the word is, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can imagine the word that you're thinking of. Um, I mean, look, when we've had Chris in front of the Select Committee, we've looked at actions before where it involves franchises where he was not responsible for the award of it. So, you know, what we're touching on here is something that does seem to have occurred uh, under his, um, his sort of executive position as Secretary of State, uh, which is why he will need to explain exactly why uh, the decision has been made to pay such a high amount out. In a way, isn't this another one of those sort of, you know, uh, consequences of the Brexit process we're in, that we just don't have the best people doing the best jobs in government? Well, I think what it actually does show that we are in a position where we are hurtling towards a no-deal uh, Brexit, potentially, when we don't seem to have the preparedness in place uh, to be able to deliver it. And that causes me huge concern, which, I'm sorry to parrot the line, uh, if MPs would get behind a deal and actually sign up to it and compromise, then we wouldn't be in a position of needing extra resilience because we'd have an orderly exit from the EU. So, you know, we're being faced with economic damage on the one hand or political damage on the other if we don't deliver the Brexit result. So I think MPs are just as culpable for not signing up to this deal uh, as those that have made errors in this particular instance. So my frustration, if you like, is shared across uh, the House of Parliament. Hugh Merriman, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Eurochannel wouldn't comment on the MP Hugh Merriman's allegations, but earlier the company said Eurotunnel has concluded an out-of-court agreement with the Secretary of State for Transport that will ensure that the Channel Tunnel remains the preferred route for vital goods to travel between the EU and the UK. Kathy.